Good morning, Michael Walsh and Roger Nurgle here, Norwell Farm. This video has got a few odds and ends in it. Several small jobs that we're doing this time of year. There's some housing updates. Uh, went to the hay auction, bought some hay. Have a lame ram and have to uh, microchip the dullings. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, ring the notification bell. That will alert you of any new videos when we post them. And hit the like button, if you will. That helps our channel. Uh, if you haven't, um, please leave us a comment and uh, share this video with a friend. So let's get started. Went to the hay auction on Friday and uh, got 18 bales. Um, 12 of them are this. It's a really nice uh, alfalfa grass mix, but it's very tender and just really, really nice. I think it was set, second cutting. So that should be good for the lambs as well. Uh, this was second cutting alfalfa. We got six bales of that. Uh, we had fed all the hay from last year, just finished that last week. Pastures are a little short right now, so we are supplementing with, uh, with some hay. And uh, the dolings and the new Ile de France ewe lambs that we got, they're still getting a little bit of grain as well. Uh, but it's going to supplement them with the hay. Uh, once the farmer that cash rents here gets the next crop of hay off and when that grows back he lets us graze that in the fall and that'll give us 13 acres of pasture so we'll have plenty of pasture uh, just gotta bite our time and wait till we get there we're getting a dry spell right now so pasture's not growing real well so this is great hay and they like it so that's what we're doing down here with the does and the white dorper ewes uh, we put this out in multiple small piles down here sheep up there Lamborghini and his ewes, we put in eh, two or three major piles. They, they get along, but the goats down here, and you can see here, they're kind of separated into the goats over here. And pretty much the sheep over here, there's one goat over there. So the goats get a little bossy with the hay, so you gotta make sure there's multiple piles so everybody can get in and get their share. Just gotta give them plenty of space so they don't, so the goats don't beat up on the sheep so bad. But they're looking good. The does are putting on weight, and uh, we'll be turning Joel, the billy goat, out with the does here in another, oh, I think three weeks, or not quite, by two and a half weeks. That'll give us uh, late February, early March baby. like the body condition on these white dorper ewes. Uh, a couple of them had milked down pretty good when they had their lambs on them, but they're putting their uh, weight back on, and you can see they're starting to grow there winter coat right over the shoulders so this one here it's starting to grow in so uh, they're doing good we'll turn the ram in with them uh, I think in December is when he goes in because we're gonna breed for late April early May lambs on the white dorpers so I'll be bred later this fall or into the winter Champagne's trying to play with one of her goats she probably wants the whole chunk of hay to lay on and the goat won't move. Come here, Garrett. Come here. And the goats just ignore them. If the dogs get too close, they'll butt them. Now she's saying pretty please. Check Cracker yesterday, and he had a either a laceration or a puncture on his right front, uh, the outside claw. So got that clipped and drained. Gave him an antibiotic injection, and then today I found this. Actually, it's a piece of concrete or whatever. Anyway, we're gonna tape this to the bottom of the good good claw on that foot, and it's flat here. So put that against the sole so there's no pressure, and then that'll be the ground surface. So we're going to tape that to that claw and that will raise the sore claw off the ground. Hopefully he'll be able to start walking on that sooner. And if we can get that to stay on, oh I don't know, five to seven days that would be good. So but you can see him right there how he's limping. So he's touching the good claw down but the outside claw is the one that's sore. He's well conditioned to the grain bucket so catching him is Pretty easy, and he's pretty well hauled or broke. 
Um, this is a foot that was affected. You can see the sore on the inside claw. It's still open and draining, so we'll get that uh, stone on the out one inside. We'll get it taped and see how it works. See how that's wrapped, and he's actually standing on it pretty well. You have to be careful when you wrap these. I've got it across the bottom, and then I've wrapped around here, but I stayed on the hard part. I stayed on the hard part of the hoof. You don't want to wrap around up here on the soft part. You know, go circular, because then that will cause pressure on there and can damage the foot. So, we'll turn him loose here. I think he's going to walk on it pretty well. Come on, crap. He's putting some weight on it. Once he gets on uh, level ground, reward. There you go. Yeah, he's putting putting weight on it now. You want just enough to keep it up off the ground. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, he's he'll get used to that and walking on it. It'll you know puts a little pressure on the bottom of the sole, so then that'll um, force some of the fluid out from inside. Um, probably take that around four or five days to heal. Probably give him another antibiotic injection uh, tomorrow or the day after. But uh, yeah, he's putting weight on it, which you could see before he wasn't, he was carrying it, he wasn't even putting it down. So that's much better. At least he stands and puts weight on when he stands. He wasn't even doing that before, but he's touching it down. There you go. He wasn't doing that before. Um, they do use this uh, block technique in cattle uh, when they trim their feet and if they have an abscess. They actually have a, I think it's rubberized or whatever, and they glue it to the bottom of the hoof and it'll stay Oh, 10 days, two weeks, maybe longer. I don't have the glue, so I may do with what I had, and if we can buy a few days for him, that should be healing up. Pretty should be much better, I would say, in another three or four days. So we'll just see how it goes. If it comes off, I may have to put another one on. But uh, this is better than it was. He's feeling better. Relieves the pain for him. Down here with Lamborghini's breeding group. Um, it's day 12. And he has serviced eight out of the ten, so um, just about one or two a day, every other day, whatever. Uh, it's a different brand of crayon I used this year, so it's not leaving a really strong mark. But you can see on this U, that U. So uh, we've got two left to go. The Jacob right there, her name's Pearl. She's left, and then there's one more. Uh, it's the Ile de France right out there in the center. So we're going to change the crayon then on the 12th of September, about three days, um, because 17 days will be on the 14th. So those other two you should be coming in here for the next day or two. Then we'll get that crayon changed and see if any of them come back in season. But this will give us lambs oh, the last of January if they go 147 days. I think it's January the 26th is when they start. And the one service last night or today is on February the 2nd. So about a week's time, which is a nice, nicely bunched. Hopefully it stays that way. These are the dolings we took the hair samples on. And you can see they have a green or lime green ear tag in them. So that's there. And they're curious. You can see what they're doing. So anyway, uh, we took the samples and put them in plastic bags and marked their ear tag number. And then, which, well, that's the lime tag number and this is their ear tag number in the software program. And then I marked the colors on so he would know for the registration papers. So anyway, there's a microchip in here. The chip is actually inside that needle. And this uh, needle goes on the side of the tail web. Um, there's just like loose skin on either side of the tail and it just goes right there under the skin. And then that's the um, microchip number and that tag was uh, affixed to, you can see here on the plastic bag, right there. 
that's what I was looking at. Also, that goes on the registration paper. So um, there's number 34 right there. So this is her microchip. So as I catch them, then I just pull out the microchip and we'll administer them. So I uh, have to get started and let the rodeo begin. Best way to subdue a goat is a rope around the base of the horns. Um, they tend to just stand still most of the time for that. It's not painful and doesn't shut their air off. So the tail web, right there, that skin between my fingers right there, that's the tail web. So you just go underneath the skin right in, right in there. They have most of the painting and staining done on the, in the house here. The laundry room and mudroom. We made this wall the green, same color as the elevator shaft. We just didn't like all the cream color there, so this actually breaks it up and I think it shows off the wood cap better. And there again, the, the base trim there has to be painted the green instead of white. And we're going to have brown um, uh, grate covers over the AC and heat vents. Uh, they, for some reason, put in white, but they're supposed to be brown. But we really like the change here. It's just going to give us enough contrast. It just kind of breaks up all the cream color, off-white color. So they did that last week. These are the treads that go on the stairs. They've been stained and finished. Um, just waiting for them to come back and straighten the metal treads. But uh, those have turned out really well. And we've asked them to put the sides up that have the most graining on them. So anxious to see that go in. Metal shelving unit, black metal shells and shelving unit goes into that. So they use that accent color, just a little pop of color, break up all the cream. Uh, and then in the walk-in pantry, you see each of those walls are also that accent color. So just a little pop here and there, keeps it interesting. We have polished concrete floors throughout on the first floor with radiant heat in the floor heating. So I'm not sure if I showed you the floor once it was finished, but we really like the color of the aggregates, the way it came out. So that really ties in well. We like it a lot. And then the granite countertops with the leather finish, we like that as well against the, the color. It just brings different elements of the, of the backsplash and the countertop out. So we're really pleased with that. This is a nine drawer dresser that we had built and the top was harvested from our black locust grove here on the farm and it's finished. I'll show it to you here in just a second. They harvested the trees, well, I think it was over a year ago. They kiln dried it and then uh, the cabinet makers took the wood and made the top for that dresser and uh, turned out really well. They preserved the knot holes and that's got some epoxy in it. So. Uh, Really excited about this, like a nice knot hole there. So it was just kind of, we wanted something from our farm that was a part of the house as well. So that's the top that will go on the dresser. Really pleased with it. Installing some of the bathroom fixtures and got some mirrors up. Shower wall. Making progress on the house. They got most of the siding painted and they're painting the trim. You can see the black there. They have the black up there, but there's still some of the original primer color there. So it's looking good. And then this trench is the drain in the floor in the garage. And we're just bringing it out here and it'll come out above ground here where the riprap is. So getting some things done here.